that long day behind you. Good times lie ahead. With company worth keeping, that'll bash a smile on your head. Come on in, the doors open, you'll find just the finest folks here. Pull up a chair, grab a drink, and let our stories your ear. Cause we're the talk, talk, talk the tavern. Here you're always welcome. The talk, talk, talk the tavern. Promising beer and bed love. The talk, talk, talk the tavern. Music, medicine, then some. The talk, talk, talk the tavern. The song's over. Here we come. And welcome to the tavern. I'm Travis Sivart, your host of Talk of the Tavern. And, uh,. Yeah, my vices tonight are, uh, I've got a pipe full of vanilla Cavendish tobacco and uh, some bourbon here in my New Orleans glass. And also make sure you check out my sci-fi and fantasy books. Portal should reach book six by the end of the year. Ed, what do you got? I'm drinking what's left of my water and a little bit of Pinot Noir, my favorite wine. Wine, yeah. I need to stop drinking it, I guess. Mm-hmm. Andrea. Andrea. Oh. <laughs> oh, hi. Yes. Okay. So knitting, starting a new project, and of course, nature soda water. So what project are you starting? Oh, it's a new washcloth. Nice. I'm making dishcloth because, you know. I like the one we have in the kitchen. Did you make that one? Yep. It's good. I like it. Nice tight weave. Huh. It's a compliment you can't say to a lot of people. So, <clears throat> tonight's topic, oh, it's on fire. It's a hard one. By the way, chat says, uh, Bree says, uh, I still have water. Mouse says, got some red Gatorade. Joe has sparkling water. Fancy. And uh, Bree says, tighter the better. I don't know what her vice is tonight, but I can guess. Um, So tonight's topic is we're going to talk about the Emmett Till Anti-Lynching Act. So we'll go into that in just a moment. Uh, I guess we could raise our glass to laws that should have fucking never been needed. But thank God they finally did it. Okay. All right. Maybe. <laughs> I could ping Cogsley and ask him for a good toast instead if we want to drink again. Uh, hold on. Let's see what Cogsley says here. Cogsley, go. Uh, there we go. We will never have true civilization until we have learned to recognize the rights of others. Will Rogers. That, oh, wow. Yeah. Very fitting, Cogsley. Well done. How the hell did that happen? It's haunted. Oh. Okay. So, <clears throat> apparently, we just passed a law in March in the U.S., signed in the law March 29th, where the act amends the Matthew Shepard and James Byrd Jr. Hate Crimes Prevention Act and prior hate crime laws to define lynching as any conspired, biased, motivated offense which results in the death or bodily injury. It was passed by the U.S. House of Representatives, blah, blah, blah. And the bill was named after the 14 year old. You're all going to die down here. I'll check and see what that sounds means in a moment. Um, that's the live chat. The bill was named after 14 year old Emmett Till, who was lynched in Mississippi in 1955, sparking national and international outrage. A federal anti lynching bill has been in discussion for over a century and has been proposed hundreds of times. Past attempts which passed at least one legislative chamber, including the dire anti-lynching bill, Costigan Wagner bill, and the Justice for Victims of Lynching Act. Hey, kitty. So, a couple comments from chat. Maria, who's in Canada, says, I honestly know nothing about this, but anti-lynching sounds like a good law? Um, and then she says, please tell me this is an old law and not something that was recently applied and where, yeah. Then she says, sign, no. never mind, recent law. Uh, this year. 
Yeah. And, and then there are questions about Emmett himself. Uh, there yeah. are things like, didn't the woman who accused Emmett later admit on her deathbed that she lied? And Maria says, wait, Emmett, he was wrongly accused of rape, wasn't he? Joe says, I think he was accused of whistling at a white woman. And Kitty asks. He didn't really do anything. She didn't really, because I, I looked at this, and yeah. she did not say anything. It was someone else. Yeah. Um, had accused him of doing that. And she, uh, what the hell, people? To, to, it was a well, child. the quick background of it, for those that don't know, Emmett Till was a 14-year-old black guy from, or black kid, whatever. He was from Chicago. Things were different mm -hmm. in Chicago in the 1950s than they were in the Deep South. Mm -hmm. Still are. Uh, blacks and whites were already going to integrated schools in Chicago, whereas they were not doing that. Uh, in the Deep South, Mississippi in particular, this took place. Emmett was basically accused of catcalling a white woman, um, whether it was whistling or saying, hey, baby, or whatever it was. He, he was accused of it. And if you were black in the Deep South, you didn't do that. Not in 1956? I may have that date incorrect. Okay, all right. In, in Mississippi, you did not do that. He was arrested for it, and before he could even go to trial, he was lynched. They pulled him out of jail, and yeah, he was lynched. And Kitty says, ain't it technically already illegal to lynch someone? It's illegal to attack or hurt somebody. It's illegal to kill somebody. <clears throat> but it was not specifically, I guess, legal to lynch <clears throat> somebody, yeah. which means basically public or private hanging yeah lynching it, it can be a public or private hanging it can be beating to death uh lynching comes in many in many forms i am being educated to it but andrea was the one as many are posing the question here when we originally talked about this several months ago she's like isn't that already against the law and the answer is Yes, it is against the law to murder someone. Um, the federal government stepping in and making it a hate crime kind of allows the federal government to, I don't want to say double jeopardy. Up the stakes? But up the stakes, yes. Because if the individual is charged with murder on the state level and something happens, the case falls apart or they feel like it wasn't tried properly or whatever, the federal government can step in and say, oh, no, motherfucker, we're charging you with the hate crime of lynching, and we're still going to get your ass. Okay, Maria says, looks like according to Google, basically it's a murder as a mob. Bree says something, a tangent, but interesting. We just had a noose that was on display out of nowhere in one of our buildings here near where I live. Like, what the fuck? I have my wine now. Um, <laughs> now, Ed, pre-show, we discussed hate crimes. And I'm like, yeah. why should hate crimes... Now, you just explained something I didn't know. And I yeah. kind of like what you explained. But my original thing is, why should it matter whether you hate the person or not? Whether it's a because hate Because... Well, let, let me finish this like, thought and then okay, explain. Because uh, I'm sure a lot of people are thinking this. You know, mm -hmm. why would murder in one way be whether you like the person, didn't know the person, mm -hmm. or hated the person for whatever reason, individual mm -hmm. or group, why would the punishment or process be any different? And that always confused me. But you kind of explained it, and now you have more, right? Well, because not only hate crime, it's, it's not just you hate me, Ed is the individual, now it just happens to be you're white and I'm black. But the hate crime steps in is because you hate me specifically because I'm black or because of my sexual orientation or because of my sex or because of my religion. That's where federal hate. So let me ask you this. <clears throat> if a white mob lynches a white person because they hate that white person, is that a hate crime? Did they hate him because of his religion or sexual orientation or... Sex? Because they're white and they said something stupid. But if a black person but said... If they were a white person, 
Right. <laughs> Can you get a hate crime against your own race? Is what I'm saying. Not specific. You could, <laughs> in theory. I mean, I have been accused of hating other black people, but I don't hate them because they're black. I hate them because they're stupid. Okay. But... <laughs> That's us. So generally, we don't hate a group of people. But recently, right. matter of fact, I shared a video with you where somebody pointed out that racism largely now is white hating white because of the things that whites have done historically and modernly, to be honest, mm -hmm. to be completely upfront. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm just curious, can that come into play if, if a group of do-gooders go, well, you're a piece of shit because you're a racist, so we're going to fucking beat you to death. Is that a hate crime? Interesting point. And by the way, yeah, that specific phrase, I hate you because you're a racist, that's that's a very interesting point because technically the First Amendment protects anybody's right to speak anything they want, no matter how fucking ignorant Wait, it is. Did you just say the First Amendment protects anybody who's white? No. Oh protects anybody to speak any anything they want, no matter how ignorant it is. <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna read a few comments. Kitty says I have a noose out of my garage. It's horse tack. It was used as a lead-away line by the U.S. Cavalry. Um, Kitty also says, white on white is politics. Right. Um, and Joe says, I hate myself and beat my meat. Is that a hate crime? Black on black violence? <clears throat> <laughs> and by the way, yes. anybody who goes, <clears throat> oh, this horrible thing happened where a white person did this to a black person. But what about black people doing that to black people? Okay, you know I, I've, I've said that in the past. But that's a just 98% of the crimes committed against black people are committed by other black people. Right. And that's, that's a fair topic, but it's not the same topic. That's going, let's talk right. about something totally fucking different to distract you from what you're actually arguing about. I'm going to argue about something else to discredit this totally different thing. Right. Um, Bree says, amendments are actually in place still. I've been questioning if they're even plausible in protecting us. Did they ever really protect us? Oh, well, here's what I'll say. We are a violent species, folks. Absolutely. We're the worst on the planet. Yeah, I can kind of agree with that. And there's some really terrifying species on the planet. Like the ant or the, the zombie fungus that turns the ants into zombies and attacks other end. I don't know. Uh, there's some terrifying things, but yeah, um, there's very few species that even come close. Chimps attacking other chimps and committing cannibal cannibalism or murder just for the sake of doing it is the people closest I can think of. Yeah, people do that a lot more than chimps do. It's a rarity in chimps, as far as we know, at this point. There's documentaries about the humans doing it. Doug says, isn't any crime done out of hate a hate crime? No. No, because it has to be against a certain race, race, religion, sex, sexual orientation, yada, yada, yada. Right. And if done and by it, the same race, group, religion, sexual orientation, I don't think it falls under hate crime anymore. No, it does not. It just right. falls into this person, we hated him, but it's not a hate crime. Marie... Um, Go ahead. This topic actually has a pretty good uh, timing right now. Um, Ahmad Arbery, I don't know if any of you remember no. that case or not. It was in a Georgia neighborhood, black kid out jogging. Would you like There's a house being house built house on the street. He stops, he checks it out. Uh, three guys come along and they basically do the, we're chasing you down. Boy, what are you doing there? And he ends I up being killed by them. I do remember. Now, all, it was like a neighborhood watch three, that did it, right? Uh, they were claiming neighborhood watch, but things came out later that said they weren't officially any neighborhood watch okay. or anything like that. They were all convicted of murder by the state of Georgia. Um, the Good. first conviction just got handed down this week. Now, I realize this show is showing later on one of the individuals as a hate crime. So both the state of Georgia charged them convicted of murder, and they're probably all three going to be charged on the federal government level for committing the hate crime. It was determined they did it specifically because it was black. 
<clears throat> if I can read a few comments here. Maria says, I think it comes down to why the action happened. If you're talking about two black people harming one another, odds are good they aren't hurting each other because of the color of their skin as a main cause. Fundamentally, I think we all here can agree that harming someone because of the color of their skin shouldn't be. And in my opinion, it is brought into the limelight, white versus black, because the reason for the harm is so horrible. Um, Bree says racism should never exist, in my opinion. We all bleed the same blood. Joe says, the only thing I'm violent against is the snack bar. Love that comment. <laughs> I feel like I should put that into a quote. <laughs> Um, and Kitty says Japanese legends of acts done to kitsune and people accused of possession by a kitsune are quite possibly some of the oldest hate crimes on record yeah um, see Doug they're looking Doug asks and why do we have to classify a crime murder is murder regardless of motive which is what I originally said but this is saying the motive is not it's racially driven. These people yes. could be a future harm in the same way to other people of the group that was attacked initially. Exactly. And that's why the hate crime thing comes into play. It's There's a potential here beyond, I murdered this person because I hate that. Ed murders me because I'm a fucking asshole. Okay. <laughs> Eight mur Ed murders me because his motivation is I'm white. He mm -hmm. is potentially harmful to all white people or vice versa. I should have done this in the other direction. I, I was trying to make myself the victim instead of saying I killed somebody. But, but it's true. But right. Um, so that's why, Doug, and I was ignorant of that before Ed. Wow, Ed, you're like really fucking educated tonight at shit. Oh, thank well you. Well done, yeah. Maria says, I have to say allegedly, but a murder attempt happened here as well, so it's not just the U.S. She's in Canada. Merely because the kid, I think he was in his late teens, was black and near a construction site. The white men working shot nails at him from their nail gun. Um, why? I don't know. It's like, why would you shoot a nail gun at a stray cat or a stray dog? Not that I'm equating people to animals, yeah. but... It's still that same kind of dumbass mentality. Um, violence is violence. Don't do it. Bree says he murders you because he's jealous of your fucking amazing mustache. That could be. And then he's a threat to everybody else with <laughs> handlebar mustaches. <laughs> Joe says if Ed tries to murder Travis, just bring out a woman with a strong back. It'll deflect. It, it'll definitely change my attention, that's for sure. Mm. <laughs> and then I'm going to read two comments here that I'm not sure if I should, but I'm going to. Kitty says, I feel there's a lot of anti-white hate right now. And by the way, I, I am assuming Kitty means in the world, in our country, in our society, as opposed to in the tavern right now. And Bree says, it's because whites lived up to the full fucking white privilege. BS. And that is something we can go back and forth on because, again, I believe white privilege exists, but I don't it, believe it exists to the extent that we try to make it out to be. Thank you, Ed. I'm glad you were able to finish my sentence with that. Yeah. Um, so Maria answers your question, Andrea, saying, I wish I knew why, Andrea, but it was 100% racially motivated. They shouted, run, N-word run allegedly not proven in court yet yeah and this is more than just <clears throat> we're, we're using black and white as racial terms here but there's much more than that in the 90s a lot of and at that point in time it was it was gay crime crime against gays now we yeah. would say lgbt and up until 98, gays weren't included in the hate crime law. They added them in 1998. Mm -hmm. hmm. Well, and I know even further back, um, 
because I was listening to something and there was hate crimes against Irish. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, Historically yeah. in the U.S., every time we've had a large influx of immigrants, whether it's Polish, Italian, Irish, Middle Eastern, uh, Central American, this pops. Um, Joe, and by the way, I'll clarify for our podcast, Joe's a black guy. Hope Joe don't mind me saying that, but I says, I know Ed has some stuff to say about white privilege. He looked at the camera like, we about to do this now. Do, do you want to voice any opinions on that? Sure. I, I was going to leave that out of this show, but does white privilege exist? Um, I, I think so. Sure. I have gone into job interviews, not gotten the job, and I have left feeling as if I didn't get the job because of the color of my skin. Mm. Maybe, maybe not. But I don't feel like it's just easy to throw out that phrase white privilege today. And I, ultimately, I feel like I am where I am in life because of the choices and decisions that I make, not anybody else. Yeah. My father, who was a civil rights leader within himself, within himself, instilled that in me as a child. Okay, he told me. Okay, he had been through a lot of shit, born in the 1930s in rural Virginia. He, he saw some shit, okay? Mm -hmm. But he told me, the white man is going to try to keep you down. But he also followed that up with, don't let. I <clears throat> introduced an article to Andrea and Ed a, a month or two ago, suggesting we could talk about it, and we were unsure, but it relates now. There was a high-ranking person within AT&T who was older, 55 or older. I don't remember the exact article. I don't have it in front of me. But he was basically retired, fired, whatever, because they said, well, we don't need you in that position anymore. We've got to downsize. Our profits are down. And before he even left, he hit that third quarter meeting where they said all of AT&T is up. And remember, as we're bringing new people in, we want diversity. So basically, they had a quota to meet of hiring non-white straight males, females, LGBT any ethnic group except for white. They had a quota they had to meet in the hiring and filling of positions. And they were clearing that positions. Me. Right. Now, by the way, I'm right now, humans go on a pendulum and we go from one extreme to the other. And right now we're in one extreme. And it's fair because we have to go to a certain extreme. So when we go back to that middle, we grow and things grow get better, more fair. Not that it's even close to fair. I'm not saying that. But, and also I'm not saying reverse racism exists or doesn't The exist. answer. Yeah. It's, it's a thing, but it's serving a financial purpose. Okay? These companies are doing it for a reason. And that reason is not out of the goodness of their heart. Okay. Societal pressure. And by the way, I'll go the other direction right now and say uh, when the Harry Potter stage show came out, the new one, and they cast a black girl work, work. as Hermione, and people went up in arms. Why? I don't fucking care. As Andrea's often said, why don't we just cast the part or the job, as the case may be, to the best qualified, to the best person for the fucking job, and not worry mm -hmm. about this other stuff? Ed, thoughts on that? Or Andrea? Otherwise, I'll read comments if you guys got nothing. I don't know. As a black man, sure, I have looked at movies and I have said, where's the black people? Mm -hmm. Star Wars, the original Lord of the Rings, you know, where's the fucking black people? Mm -hmm. But 
there's stuff out today. I forget what it's called. Um, I think it's on Netflix. It's like 19th century England, and you have black people as lords and so oh, forth. Oh, that, that That's it. Okay, I look at that, and I think, okay, hold up. What the fuck? What, what no fucking black people lords and shit like that? Andrea? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love that show, and they fixed that with one sentence. I don't know if you watched it, Ed, but the, the reason they, they, they addressed it in a really good way, it was one sentence that says, because the king fell in love with the queen, which is a black woman, and accepted her, that's how the acceptance came around, because the king started it. It's an alternate it's reality. reality. Yeah, yeah, tell me about it. Way alternate reality. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, that one, one sentence, they put that in there, and that explained all of it. So I thought that it, was pretty good. It was oddly enough, though, there was a movie that was supposed to be made. I don't know if it was ever made. And uh, the chick from Guardians of the Galaxy, her from Star Trek, Who, whatever yeah. her name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She was supposed to have been in this movie playing a role of... A singer from the 1940s 50s black singer i don't remember which one now um that was very deeply dark black people lost their fucking minds because she wasn't black enough mm -hmm. i'm like what the fuck okay okay a couple comments from chat Weird. kitty says i don't like filling out those ethnicity questions because i know full well they're probably just looking to check off some boxes Maria says, to be honest, when it comes yeah. to applying for work, I wish we didn't fill out the ethnicity box and went in blind, voice Doesn't only. Matter. Hire people based on their resume and how they verbally present themselves, but that's not the world we live in. By the way, I feel that same way about um, when in court. I don't think the jury should be able to see the accused. I think they should base it off facts, but hmm. that's me. Um, hmm. Interesting. And Kitty says, JCR, I, I don't know if you meant J.K. Rowling, J.K.R., retroactively made Hermione black. This makes a number of incidents books really bad. Um, Maria says, people lost their minds when they were going to have Ariel in the live-action black as well. Ariel is my favorite princess. I'd love to see her with a different skin tone than me. It would have made a lover less. Not if she's got those cute little shells over her boobies. I'm okay with that. Him though being black in the Marvel comic universe, that was fucking awesome because, mm. hey, he's a good fucking actor. He is. He is. <laughs> and, yeah, when it comes to, I tell you what, watching Miss Marvel or Naomi, which is a DC comic book series on HBO Max, I'm pleased, and I mentioned to Andrea, look at this, we're seeing primary roles filled by females and or other ethnic groups besides white. And the white people are the best friend, the background character. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of awesome because there is representation and it does flip the things. But again, can we, in the future, once we get things balanced a little better, just... <sighs> Maria says if they take away the shell bra, that's where I draw the line. Ariel R-rated. Yeah, that's where I draw the line. I'm about to cross. <laughs> Bree says, just take the bra off. We don't need bras. Wait a minute. I don't believe that mermaids wear them. Well, that's a different show. We'll have that one in the future, too. <laughs> and Maria says, uh, I mean, with podcast, we kind of are going with the just based on the person as opposed to their skin color or background. Um. <laughs> okay. I don't know if I should read that comment. Um, Joe says J.K. Rowling, the author of Harry Potter, can just do that, I guess. Dumbledore is gay. Hermione is black. Joe has a 10-inch wand. She can alter reality. Um... <laughs> It's good for your wand. It's, I bet you it's made with dragon bone, too. Um, so, anyhow, any closing thoughts on this topic, guys? 
No. No. Okay. Here's what I say, guys. Let's get our shit together. Let's do what we have to do to get us to a place where we can accept people as a goddamn person instead of all the other things. And then let's get to moving forward together. Here's to you. Have a good night. And Kitty says, mermaids don't wear bras. Those are mollusks stuck to their chest. <laughs> That's a whole different movie when you got a starfish on your boobie. <laughs>